Good evening. You might have noticed a notification on your cell phone this evening, alerting you to the fact that COVID-19 has taken hold within our community and recommending that you stay home and stay safe. Our hospitals are reaching capacity as we're reporting nearly 795 cases of COVID-19 today. Prolonged face-to-face -face contact with people outside of our households is how this virus is spreading. Folks are throwing house parties and holding extensive social gatherings with neighbors, friends, and extended family. The spread of this virus isn't because of any one thing. So it's incumbent upon all of us to patronize businesses responsibly, hold virtual happy hours or online get togethers with people outside of our households and remain vigilant if we're going to contain the spread of COVID-19. Wear your mask, practice physical distancing, wash your hands. The simplest of measures could have the greatest impact on our ability to contain the spread of this disease. Stay strong, San Antonio. We're going to get through this together. Following an emergency alert tonight, San Antonio Mayor Ron Nuremberg stating we have reached emergency status here in San Antonio. In a video posted to his Facebook page, the mayor urging every person in Bear County to take this crisis seriously. That message followed another new record number of cases recorded here in Bear County. As you heard him say, an additional 795 positive cases reported just today brings our total to 9,652. Two new deaths were also reported, bringing us to 107. In addition, a disturbing number of hospitalizations to report tonight. Right now, there are 730 patients in local hospitals with 219 in the ICU and 112 currently on ventilators. Since the pandemic began, more than 3,100 people have recovered here locally. Today's staggering new case numbers, part of an alarming trend in recent weeks, the rapid spread of COVID-19 across Bear County prompted that emergency alert message sent to your phones earlier tonight. Yeah, the night team's Garrett Berger has been out and about tonight at the Pearl talking to people about that spike and the new alert. Garrett, what are you seeing out there? Well, it's not a busy night by any means out here at the Pearl, but we are still seeing people out and about. And while different groups appear to be staying away from each other, not everyone out here has been wearing a mask. Bars might be closed right now, but restaurants are still allowed to be open at half capacity, and we are seeing folks out visiting them. Now, since the governor has taken lead on most restrictions, there's not much more local leaders like the mayor and county judge can do beyond the steps they have already taken, like restricting outdoor gatherings and instituting a mask order for businesses. So that stay home message in the alert you got is just an advisory. It is not a new stay home order. Still, the alert caught people's attention. Well, I mean, to see it on my phone like that puts a different perspective. I live right across the street, so we're just walking around, obviously keeping our mask on no matter what, but it's still frightening. It's to see the cases in the increment and just going. I just hope the community is keeping their, their mask on and, and, and staying safe. And at least one man told us he will be wearing a face mask more frequently now. I hate to say it, I was one of the, the people who loosened up a little bit when we went back to work and things started opening up and I didn't wear it as much as I should, but certainly uh, now uh, I wear it a lot more often, yeah. The mayor noted in a news release accompanying this alert that these kind of alerts are reserved for emergencies and we are, quote, we have clearly reached emergency status, adding that we need everybody to take the crisis seriously and act accordingly in order to stop the spread of this virus. Live at the Pearl, I'm Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Garrett. It is also worth noting the skyrocketing number of cases isn't just happening here in San Antonio. Today, the state of Texas recorded more than 5,700 new cases and 42 deaths. The state's death toll now rests at 2,366. This countywide emergency coming on the heels of the resignation of Metro Health Director Don Emmerich, who took to Twitter today, saying although her resignation may have been surprising to some city leaders, that wasn't the case for her close co-workers. In her thread, Emmerich says serving San Antonio for the past five months has been a privilege. She writes, quote, I am humbled and emboldened by the outpouring of support from the San Antonio community and my former colleagues. From the bottom of my heart, I thank you, end quote. During a COVID-19 briefing on Tuesday, Emmerich became visibly upset over backlogs in testing, saying, I'm angry, I'm tired, and it shouldn't be this way. The very next day, Emmerich tweeted the pressure amid the pandemic has been, quote, wreaking havoc on the staff in public health departments. 
her resignation. In her letter, Emmerich says she hopes her position will be filled by a person of color and that the Black Lives Matter movement has led her to reflect on equity. In the meantime, current assistant city manager Dr. Colleen Bridger will act as the interim director until somebody else is hired. Toilet paper, paper towels, disinfected, and hand soap all limited once again at HEB stores here in San Antonio. Following this week's significant uptick in cases and hospitalizations, HEB has rolled out a list of limited items, which also includes some meat products. You can find the full list posted right now on our website at ksat.com. Once again, HEB does require you to wear a mask before entering its stores. Now to the latest on the coronavirus pandemic and how it's affecting the U.S. The country now recording more than 125,000 deaths so far and 45,000 new coronavirus cases, the largest single day increase. This is one of the nation's hotspots. Florida records a new record, more than 9,600 new cases there in 24 hours. ABC News has learned new details regarding President Trump's recent rally in Tulsa, Oklahoma last week. ABC's Karina Mitchell has those latest details. In hard hit Texas, recording 5,700 new daily cases, Governor Greg Abbott backtracking, admitting in hindsight reopening happened too quickly. If I could have done anything differently, it would have been to delay the opening of bars. In Houston, the highest alert now in effect, calling for a return to stay at home orders for millions of residents. Let's be real. We will not get through this if we don't look at the reality of the situation. The Sunshine State, Florida, also in a state of crisis, thousands now rushing to get tested. Miami-Dade County beaches shutting for the upcoming 4th of July weekend to help prevent the spread. And Florida bars banned from serving alcohol. All of a sudden, we can't even have a cocktail outside. I'm not even near anybody. This is really getting out of hand. Tonight, New York State investigating a potential cluster. A Florida resident who was positive with COVID traveled to the state to attend a drive through graduation in Westchester. Four others now testing positive. Frustration growing as nine other states also hit pause on reopening. California's governor calling for a return to a stay-at-home order. This disease does not take a summer vacation. Despite the rampant spread of the virus, tonight this new video, obtained by the Washington Post from President Trump's comeback rally in Tulsa, Oklahoma, a week ago. It shows workers allegedly removing stickers that say, do not sit here, please, hours before his arrival. The campaign insisting the rally was in, quote, full compliance with local requirements. Eight Trump campaign staffers testing positive for COVID-19 as a result of that rally, dozens quarantined. Friday, Vice President Mike Pence defending the president's large-scale gatherings. And even in a health crisis, the American people don't forfeit our constitutional rights. The health officials now revealing the VP is postponing planned campaign events next week in Arizona and Florida out of an abundance of caution. The European Union now says it will ban most Americans from traveling to EU countries because of the dramatic spike in cases here in the U.S. Karina Mitchell, ABC News, New York. Back here at home, despite the restriction of gatherings of more than 10 people at city parks, protesters were out today pushing for the removal of a statue at Columbus Park. Councilman Robert, Roberto Trevino has submitted a request to remove the statue and rename the park. And the Christopher Columbus Italian Society has agreed to have the statue removed and returned to them. However, the statue is still there, which is pulling in mixed reactions. History is history. We have to be concentrated on improving the lot of society uh, and learning from history and not trying to destroy it. We cannot continue to glorify one ethnic group over another or their symbols of superiority. And that's why this symbol must come down. The mayor says this issue still has to go through a process, including a governance committee meeting scheduled for this week before the statue can be removed. Outside with live cam, you probably noticed things just looked really strange out there today. Dense Saharan dust in the air made for a very hazy and humid Saturday for us here in South Texas. The dust is still out there tonight, but it will begin to thin tomorrow. So that is some really good news. We're sitting in the low 80s now. We made it up to the low 90s this afternoon. So a hot, muggy, hazy day for us here in South Texas, but our high temperature are right around average for this time of year. We didn't pick up much in the way of rain today, but we've got some showers west of 35 tonight, and we'll have a chance of some showers as we round out the weekend tomorrow. We'll talk more about that and when the Saharan dust will really start to clear out coming up in the full forecast.
Still ahead on the night beat, protesters across the nation once again flooding the streets in the wake of George Floyd's death in Minneapolis. We'll have the latest updates. Plus, migrant children set to be released from family detention centers due to the coronavirus pandemic. Details on the timeline for release and the options available to them. And after the break, new safety precautions for voters in Bear County. We spoke with the county's election administrator to get an idea of what local voting will look like amid this pandemic. The battle of where how our elections will be conducted was the focus of this week's episode of KSAT Explains. That's our new weekly digital news program that aims to offer perspective into the stories we bring you throughout the day. For this episode, Myra Arthur talked to the Bear County Elections Administrator about the precautions her department is taking to prepare for in-person voting. We've spent a lot of time getting the PPE, so the election officials will have I think they call them sneeze guards, those big plastic. We'll put those on the qualifying tables. Um, we're getting the masks and face shields, gloves, uh, hand sanitizer. Hand sanitizer will be available at all polling sites. Voters will also be able to use plastic gloves to touch the voting machines or pencils. You can use the eraser as a stylus to make your selections. Voters should also take steps on their own to stay healthy. Here's the checklist that the state of Texas encourages people to follow when voting. Self-screen before you go out to vote. If you have any COVID-19 symptoms, you might want to consider curbside voting if you're eligible. Stay six feet away from others. Wear a mask, but be prepared to remove it if an elections judge needs to confirm your identity. You can put it back on once they're done. This pandemic has impacted not only how we vote, but also polling sites themselves. Bear County has removed about three polling locations due to the coronavirus. We normally are at the Justice Center. Well, we can't be there because the state Supreme Court has said that anyone going into a county building that's holding court or having a hearing, they have to have their temperature checked and they have to wear a mask. And we can do neither of those mandates for a voter. Another way to minimize risk or exposure, vote early on a Tuesday, a Wednesday or Thursday when the polls usually see less traffic. Early voting in the July runoff election begins on Monday. You can watch KSAT Explains mail-in voting on demand on the KSAT TV app. It's also available on most smart TV devices or on KSAT.com slash explains. Usually when I drive in, as I come off of Bandera Road onto 410, I can mm -hmm. see the city skyline mm -hmm. today. I could barely see the buildings hit the medical center. It looks so eerie. Yeah, it was gross. Yeah. <laughs> so strange. This dust, this dust is incredibly dense, and it hasn't just been affecting us here in South Texas. This is some video out of Louisiana. This was actually yesterday because this dust kind of moved out of their area today. Uh, but, I mean, this looks kind of similar to what we saw today, right? Aside from the, the waterfront property there, but the skyline there, the hazy skyline, very similar to what we saw. And, and so, yeah, it wasn't just us here in Texas uh, seeing the Saharan dust that, yes, it's called Saharan dust because it came all the way from Africa, friends, all the way across the Atlantic. Courtney and I were talking about this earlier this evening. Like it's, it makes things gross out there. It can be kind of irritating, but when you stop and think about it, it's kind of cool that all this dust was over in Africa. So there's that. I'm just trying to provide a little bit of a silver lining here, but this dust, I saw pictures from a meteorologist in the Nashville area. Their skies looked very similar to ours today. So yeah, not just us here in South Texas, but if you're kind of over it, yeah, it kind of doesn't make you feel good. Maybe you have a headache, itchy eyes, stuff like that. It'll really start to thin out as we get into the day tomorrow. So this little color key we've got up there as you get closer to that lighter tan color, that's some uh, lighter concentrations of this dust. So it will begin to thin out tomorrow and as we get into the early part of next week. Now, as we get into late Monday into Tuesday, you'll notice that darker brown indicating the dense dust starts to sneak back onto the map. But I think this next plume the denser dust should stay off to our east a bit more as compared to this plume that has settled in over the past couple of days. So we'll start to thin out this dust tomorrow, but it certainly could still look hazy tomorrow. We're not going to see things completely clear up. That's for sure. 82 now at the airport dew point in the low 70s. We've had a nice breeze around today. That's been pretty good, except maybe it kind of blew the dust into your eyes or, or your mouth, something like that. Uh, but overall, a, a warm and muggy day for us here. 
current air quality reading even tonight is still unhealthy for everyone. So usually when we show you this air quality graphic, it's because we've got higher concentrations of ozone and we'll go to this orange color right here. Unhealthy for sensitive groups, those with a respiratory condition, also the elderly and the very young. That was not the case today. Uh, air quality air quality today because of the particulates and this dust made air quality unhealthy for all of us and you were encouraged to limit your time outdoors. Now as we get this dust to start to thin out tomorrow, air quality should improve a bit and of course we'll uh, update you on that first thing tomorrow morning on Good Morning San Antonio. So it's very warm out there, 70s in the hill country, 85 in Catula, still 88 degrees in Del Rio and our dew point numbers are very high across the board, essentially everyone in the 70s and that's the top of our humidity scale. There so a warm and humid night and we're going to keep the cloud cover around so that'll keep our temperatures from moving very much only into the mid to upper 70s tonight. We'll keep the cloud cover and hazy conditions around overnight as well, but a 20% chance of an isolated shower kicking in overnight and tomorrow actually offers about a 30% chance of an isolated shower or storm as we get into the late afternoon and early evening hours. So uh, 90 year high temperature tomorrow and keep in mind it will still look a bit hazy, but not quite as bad as it did today. I want to check on radar really quickly because we do have a couple of showers popping up west of the I-35 corridor. Not a whole lot to see here, but northern Medina County there north of Dehennis and Hondo. Some little downpours pacing off to the north. Those will be moving into Bandera County, and I do think we could see a higher coverage of these isolated showers develop as we get into the overnight hours. A little piece of upper level energy should slide overhead tomorrow, and that'll keep chances of isolated showers and non-severe thunderstorms around through late Sunday afternoon early Sunday evening and then we'll kind of quiet things down this time tomorrow night. Stray shower possible Monday after that we we turn off the faucet there and settle into a really summer like pattern next week with highs pushing triple digits by Wednesday into Thursday guys. Yeah, even though it was a little humid, it's felt so nice over the past couple of days. I even forgot it was going to be in the hundreds. Yeah, it's about to feel like <laughs> 4th of July around here. Hotter than a firecracker. <laughs> All right, Larry, uh, Aggies QB1, Kellen Mond, not shy to use his voice. No, he's not. And you know what? Before he leads the Aggies onto the football field this season, fingers crossed we have a college football yeah. season, he is leading the way amongst college student athletes at Texas A&M. He is marching for justice. Look at him right there with his megaphone. Plus, the Spurs, well, once the season resumes, they have a lot of work to do and not a lot of time to do it. Coming up. Quarterback Kellen Mond said he's an Aggie until the day he dies, and that AM in AM is a great university, but also has a lot to change. Mond joined other AM student athletes at a March Friday to protest the Sullivan Ross statue, the school's former president, located in the heart of campus. Ross was a brigadier general in the Confederate Army who was responsible for the slaying of many African Americans in his march toward the preservation of slavery in the South, so many want the statue removed. Mond spoke with AM Chancellor John. John Sharp and school president Michael Young to express the change he'd like to see on campus. They were both open-minded and they definitely both agreed that there needs to be change on this university. Um, but I've always said, you know, awareness means nothing without action to me. And so that's what, you know, I'm not necessarily a wanting to apply pressure. I just want changes to be made uh, in the right way. And if we have a bunch of people on this campus who uh, are getting offended by a statue that stands for something uh, that is horrific, then I believe that the statue needs to come down. Mon used a megaphone during the unity walk that started at A&M's administration building, ending at the Ross statue where the Aggies were met by people guarding it. Some words were exchanged, but everyone stayed calm. When the NBA season resumes in Orlando, the Spurs will have their work cut out for them. They are 12th in the Western Conference, four games behind eighth place Memphis. In order to extend their playoff streak to an NBA record 23 consecutive seasons, they will have to leapfrog at least four teams to take over the eighth spot. 
if the Spurs are ninth after eight games, but within four of the eighth place team, they would force a play-in series with that team in the eighth spot. The Spurs would need to beat them twice to grab the final playoff berth, whereas the other squad would only have to beat the Spurs once. On top of that, San Antonio would try to do this without their second leading scorer, Lamarcus Aldridge, who's done for the season after having shoulder surgery. So the Spurs will tip off in Orlando July 31st with the Kings, who are one half game ahead of the Silver and Black. August 2nd, the Spurs will play the Grizzlies with a huge chance to make up some ground. They'll have the Sixers the very next night on the 3rd. August 5th, they'll score off with Denver, followed by a matchup with the Jazz on the 7th. August 9th, the Spurs and Pelicans will face off at 2 p.m., and that'll be live right here on KSAT 12, and they'll close out the regular season against the Rockets and then the Jazz. On Thursday, Vince Carter announced he's retiring from the NBA after 21 seasons. The 43-year-old made it official while appearing on the Ringers Winging It with Vince Carter podcast. Vince entered the league in a shortened season in 1998 due to the NBA lockout, and he's retiring in a season cut short by COVID-19. He said he didn't realize that until somebody told him. Atlanta was not invited to Orlando because they were 27 games under 500 when play was suspended. Vince feels he still has some gas in the tank, but understands it's probably time for him to step aside. As, as a player, I still feel like I could play another year. Um, I, I understand how the NBA works. And sometimes it's... Uh, it's, it's, it gets frustrating for the older players in the league, if you if you would, and uh, when you still feel like you can compete, and you know, and I understand, I, you know, I was on a team where we weren't playing for a playoff position, so now it's player development, and that's kind of when the older players or whatever kind of. No, I don't want to use the word push to the side, but now it's time to develop the younger players. And I understood that. Carter is 19th all-time in NBA history in scoring, and he was the league's rookie of the year in 1999. And coming up later in sports, former Dallas Cowboys wide receiver Des Bryant wants to play ball with area quarterbacks. And, of course, they want to play ball with him. We got that coming up. Should be interesting. Yep. Thanks, Larry. You got it. We'll be right back. Stay with us. In the week since the death of George Floyd in Minneapolis, protesters have been taking to the streets across the country demanding justice and calling for an end to what they call systemic racism. Those protests continuing this weekend in cities across the country. Here's ABC's Andrew Zimbert with the details. The death of Elijah McClain last August after a confrontation with police while walking home in his Aurora, Colorado neighborhood is receiving new scrutiny. The officers involved reassigned. Protesters now demanding justice for the young black man. In Atlanta, calls for change continue to grow. Protesters taking to the streets once again following the death of Rayshard Brooks in a Wendy's parking lot at the hands of police. And in Boston, hundreds of mothers of black children taking part in the inaugural March Like a Mother for Black Lives event. On Friday, police in Richmond, Virginia, declaring an unlawful assembly at the Robert E. Lee Monument for the second time in three nights after paintballs were fired at officers and several were hit with hard objects. Protesters have been calling for the removal of the former Confederate general statue. In Florence, South Carolina, NFL linebacker Darius Leonard says he was the victim of racial profiling while eating with black and biracial friends at a Chipotle restaurant. Leonard says the manager asked them to leave or he would call the police after a white customer allegedly felt threatened. You know, once, you know, once he said anything uh, about the police, uh, the first thing that came to my mind was, you know, like a, my wife and, and my little girl. My first thought that came to my mind was, you know, I'm not making it back home to them. Chipotle has suspended the manager involved and Chipotle's chairman and CEO releasing a statement. We have a zero tolerance policy for discrimination of any kind. I've personally reached out to Darius and I'm committed to ensuring the appropriate action is taken once the investigation concludes. He basically said all the things that he was supposed to say. I mean, everything he was saying, you know, politically correct, you know, you we have zero tolerance of uh, discrimination, this and that. The Colts said Darius's experience demonstrates the struggle so many black Americans and people of color face every day. Andrew Dimber, ABC News, Washington. The four Minneapolis police officers involved in George Floyd's death on Memorial Day will be making their next court appearance on Monday. The Mississippi State House has passed a resolution to begin the process to change that state's flag. By a vote of 85 to 34, the newly passed resolution allows lawmakers there to consider a bill which would change or remove the flag. Today's vote is the first step. 
The measure now moves to a Senate committee before going to the chamber. Mississippi lawmakers in recent weeks have been weighing removing the Confederate battle emblem from the state flag and con amid continued racial justice protests. Mississippi is the last state in the country whose flag features the Confederate emblem. More than 20 employees walked out of a Boston area Whole Foods after the store banned masks saying Black Lives Matter. The Whole Foods spokesperson says the dress code has been around a long time and prohibits clothes with slogans, logos, or messages that are unrelated to the company. Employees say managers pick and choose when to apply that policy. He said I'm in violation of dress code. And then I told him, I asked him, well, Black Lives Matter isn't a brand. Who owns the LLC for Black Lives Matter, the brand? People are allowed to wear pins, you know, LGBTQ pins, and um, they have never called us out on wearing our Red Sox masks or Patriots masks. Employees hope Amazon's CEO Jeff Bezos will advocate for them. Amazon is the parent company of Whole Foods, and Bezos has donated $10 million to organizations that support Black Lives Matter. A big change for America's longest-running primetime TV series, The Simpsons will no longer use white actors to voice characters of color. The move by The Simpsons represents a major shift for that show. For 30 years, it has used white actors to play a number of non-white characters, including Dr. Julius Hibbert and Apu. The show will recast the voice actors. Returning to coronavirus coverage now, the federal government has been ordered to release migrant children at family detention centers. A federal judge made that ruling on Friday, citing health concerns due to COVID-19. Officials have until mid-July to release the children. They must be turned over to their parents if their parents are not in custody. If the parents are in custody or unavailable for another reason, children can be released to another suitable sponsor. They can also be sent to a non-congregate setting that has been deemed free of COVID-19 with the permission of parents or guardians. The total number of COVID-19 infections may be 6 to 24 times greater than reported. Those are the findings from the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. The agency says it took a survey of blood samples in six areas across the country. That survey looked for coronavirus antibodies in blood samples from commercial laboratories, which were collected for reasons unrelated to the virus. The results of the survey, which were from March 23rd to May 3rd in Connecticut, Florida, New York, Missouri, Utah, and Washington State. Milk, bread, eggs, and ice cream will now be available for same-day pickup at Target. The company announced it's expanding its pickup and curbside services to include fresh and frozen grocery items. That's an additional 750 items added to the program. Target says by the end of the month, more than 400 stores will offer those enhanced services. Coming up on the night beat, emergency rooms around the country are reporting more serious injuries to young children amid the pandemic. The reason why, next. Never miss a story. Watch live or when you want. San Antonio's latest news and weather. Streaming free on KSAT TV. Well, we all know kids will be kids. That means bicycle spills, scooter falls, you name it. And being cooped up at home amid the pandemic may be adding to the shenanigans, with many finding more creative ways to injure themselves. 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz looks at ways to keep your kids safe and out of the ER. While parents are doing more of this at home, they're also struggling to keep their cooped up kids out of the ER. The kids are getting a little bit more creative in how they're playing around here. Elise Everett's nine-year-old daughter sprained her ankle and 12-year-old Charlie chipped his tooth. My worst fear, like everyone else's worst fear, is having to go to the ER. Across the country, ERs are seeing more children injured while playing and falling. Serious injuries do require an ER visit, but to avoid them in the first place, CR says start with a home schedule. If you have a routine for everyone going outside and getting some exercise each day, then your child may be less likely to be bouncing off the walls later in the day and hurt themselves. Next, she says, minimize new hazards. A lot of parents may be tempted to buy things that they might not have thought about buying before, like a home trampoline or a hoverboard. Do you have the energy to establish rules around the use of that product? And are you going to be able to supervise your child while using that product? And those extra cleaning supplies need to be stored out of the reach of children, even the hand sanitizer, which contains 60% alcohol. Since March, calls to poison control centers related to hand sanitizer have skyrocketed, and the majority of those are for children under the age of five. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News.
Hey, if they get really bored, I'm looking for parkourers for rooftop weather <laughs> on Fridays. I'm done parkouring. It's all you guys. So have film your kids safely parkouring. Yeah, not, on really roofs, not on roofs. Not off the roof. <laughs> not on hoverboard. <laughs> no, not that either. I'm sore watching that story. <laughs> I know. I know. Um, yeah, have them send their parkour my way. You can email me. Yeah. Them give, parkour give light. Good little idea there. Yeah. Safe, safe parkour. <laughs> uh, you know, we've been talking about the parkour dust light. that was around today. So hazy. It's warm and muggy as well. We've got temperatures generally in the low 80s right now. And overnight, it's really not going to cool down very much because of the clouds and the humidity. Temperatures tomorrow will start off in the mid to upper 70s. We do have some showers west of town tonight. We'll take a look at radar and I'll get you another look, another look at your forecast coming up. Well, one way you could describe the weather today, I would say gritty. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. almost like feels like if you breathe out there, you could get a little bit get of in your taste in your teeth. Yeah. It's eating sand from Africa, though. That's what we're saying. Our silver yeah, lining is it pretty is. cool. Just came a long way. It is <laughs> fascinating. Yes, it did travel a long way to make our sky look awfully hazy on this Saturday. And again, it'll start to thin out tomorrow. That's the good news. But if you if you miss the beautiful view today, I've got the time lapse for you here and very hazy. We had some lower clouds off and on, but also a lot of high clouds, but it was really hard to make out what was going on with the cloud cover today uh, because of the hazy conditions uh, that were in place because of that Saharan dust over South Texas. So I put together this little graphic for you, and it does show that today we were all kind of frowning a bit because it just wasn't so pretty outside. That uh, dust was quite dense tomorrow. The dust will start to thin out just a bit. It will still look hazy out there, but I don't think it'll be just as kind of gross looking as it was today. And then as we get into Monday, uh, the concentration, the density of that dust will start to become a lot lighter as we get into the early part of next week. So today was definitely the worst day as far as that dust is concerned. So still a little bit hazy on your Sunday. We'll start you off mid to upper 70s with a lot of cloud cover, especially through the first part of the day. I can't rule out that we'll see a few peaks of sun during the back half of the day tomorrow. 30% chance of a shower uh, through about lunchtime tomorrow, and then we could maybe see some isolated thunderstorms tomorrow afternoon as well. But overall, coverage of rainfall tomorrow is going to be on the lower end. It'll stay humid, but we'll have another nice breeze in place to finish up the weekend uh, with south southeast winds about 10 to 20 miles per hour. So I'm going to step off real quick and put this clicker down so we can uh, get a better look at radar here. We do have a couple of downpours that have developed uh, off to the west of 35, and I do want to zoom in there. So uh, and then around San Antonio in Bear County right now, things are just fine, but off to the west there, northern Medina County moving into Bandera County. Hey, we've got a nice little one lone lightning strike showing up. That's what that white kind of stick thing is. That's a lightning strike that's showing up there in far northern, uh, far northern Medina County. Uh, this is pacing off to the north. Looks like Bandera, you're getting a little shower right now, but the heaviest rain from that little downpour will stay off to your west. And uh, otherwise, not a whole lot to see out there. Some showers in western, uh, western Bandera County there into Real County. But otherwise, that is about it. We do have a couple of sprinkles off well to the west of Pearsall there, and all these are moving off to the off to the north this evening. So a couple of showers out there now, and I do think we have the possibility to see some additional shower activity develop overnight tonight and into the day tomorrow because of what's going on in the upper levels of the atmosphere. High pressure down to our southwest. Winds are flowing counterclockwise around that high pressure, and we've got a piece of upper level energy dropping down over portions of New Mexico tonight. So what's going on? We're getting a lot of moisture here in the form of cloud cover moving in from the southwest. That's why it stayed cloudy today, and we should consider continue to see a lot of clouds tomorrow, but we've also got a couple of weak little upper level disturbances here in this flow aloft, and that lends itself to some showers, maybe even a few rumbles of thunder as we get into the day tomorrow. So that's kind of the setup heading into tonight. Some isolated showers will be possible through early tomorrow morning, and I, I like how this this uh, forecast model is showing this uh, batch of rain moving in from the southwest during the first part of the day tomorrow. That's one of those weak little pieces of upper level energy, so some isolated showers around down. As we get into tomorrow afternoon, we could hear some rumbles of thunder, I think generally north and west of San Antonio late in the afternoon into the evening hours, and then we'll get past sunset tomorrow and things will start to wind down. So a touch hazy tomorrow, but you may get a little bit of rain. So overall, not a bad day tomorrow. 10% chance of a stray shower on Monday and then very, very summer like next week. High pressure moves overhead. That'll cut off the rain chances and send our temperatures into the upper 90s. Guys, thank you so much, Katie. Here's Larry with more sports.
Yeah, you know what this story I'm about to tell you about is making national headlines. Indianapolis Colts linebacker Darius Leonard was kicked out of a Chipotle, and he says he was a victim of racial profiling. Plus, Des Bryant thrilled a local seven on seven football team. Look at those smiles coming up. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. Thursday, Colts linebacker Darius Leonard took to Instagram to say he was kicked out of a Chipotle in Florence, South Carolina. The manager there ordered Leonard and his group of five to leave, saying a white customer claimed they were being verbally abusive to him, which Leonard said is a lie. Leonard was there with his brother, his brother's girlfriend, and two close friends, all of whom are non-white. The manager asked them to leave and said he'd call the police on them. Being a black male now in America and to hear that they want to involve the police. And, you know, the first thing that went in my mind was, you know, I have a wife and a kid. And if a police being involved in your mind, you're thinking you're not making it home. So for me to have to sit there and think that my life is in jeopardy just because I'm sitting there eating with my family, not causing no problem, is scary. Chipotle has suspended that manager while the restaurant investigates the incident, and Chipotle CEO has apologized to Leonard. There are plenty of familiar faces on this summer's Flying Chonkless Texas Collegiate League squad. Nearly half of the 30-man rosters comprise the players from the greater San Antonio area, and almost all are from the state of Texas. As a result, local players have had a chance to meet old friends while also getting in some real game action for the first time in months after the coronavirus wiped out the 2020 collegiate baseball season. I played with, like I said, Tyler LaRue uh, a couple years and, you know, everybody else, you know, I just played against and so know the name. And so it's good to get to know all these guys that you play against your whole life. It's a great experience. It's uh, cool finally seeing people that I played against and played with um, now that they're mature and in their, uh, their full form of baseball and getting to the next league, I get to finally showcase my talent with them. So it's awesome. Ever since I was a little kid, like I'd always watch San Antonio missions and the chanclas and everything. And I'm like, I always dreamed about being on this field and, and playing in, in a professional professional atmosphere and everything. And it's great to be out here and get the chance to do that. After the first couple of practices, we'll definitely be well put together. And I feel like after a couple more practices, we'll be nice, crisp and ready to go for the first game. The TCL season gets underway June 30th. The Chonklas open with a three game series in Amarillo before returning to the Wolf for their first home game July 3rd. NASCAR Cup Series Racing Pocono, 15 laps to go. Alex Bowman has a right rear tire going down, throwing debris on the track, but the race remains under green flag conditions. Seven laps to go, Joey Logano in the 22, throwing up sparks as his left front tire is flat, but again, no caution flag. Final lap, Kevin Harvick, all smiles. For the first time in his career, he's a winner at Pocono. No burnout, though, because he needs the same car for tomorrow's Pocono. 350. Round three of the Travelers Championship from Cromwell, Connecticut. No fans in attendance, just deer. Par 412, Phil Mickelson by a fence punches the ball into the rough. He would bogey and shoot a one over, 71 dropping six spots. He's tied for seventh at 12 under par. Everyone is looking up to Brendan Todd, 12th hole for birdie, 25 feet, and it is good. He went nine under 61 and sits first at 18 under par. Dustin Johnson is second. Two shots back. Early this afternoon, wide receiver Des Bryant tweeted, any QBs in San Antonio? Let's get some work. So area quarterbacks from high school and college responded. Then around 8 tonight, Des posted this pic with San Antonio Ducks elite 7v7 squad saying he can't even explain the love and joy he had working out with them. That went down at Cornerstone Christian, and I'm hearing Des is going to be in town still for a few more days. So maybe we'll see more pics. Proving if you tweet, they will come. There you go. <laughs> Thanks, Larry. You got it. Forgettable. We'll be right back. All right, overnight staying cloudy, humid and warm with some isolated showers possible. And we'll have some isolated showers and storms around on Sunday. Most of us, though, will miss out on the rain. Still a little hazy tomorrow and that dust will continue to thin out early next week. Heat high moves back in that has us feeling very summer like as we approach the 4th of July next. All right, thank you, Katie. That's all of our time for tonight. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to catch GMSA tomorrow starting at 6 and have a great night. We'll see you tomorrow. Good night.